Welcome to worship here at Auburn First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pat, and today is Sunday, June 26, 2022. This is Pride Sunday, and we're so glad you've joined us today. Auburn First United Methodist Church is an affirming Christian church where all are welcome and all are invited into full participation in the life of this church community. Let's continue now with the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Our God is great and greatly to be pleased. The whole earth reflects God's power and might. When we recall the wonders of God's creation, we rejoice in the beauty and complexity of it all. God's majesty and grace are with us now and forever. Let us worship and praise God for God's faithfulness. Amen. Are there any kids out there? Okay. Well, you're all disciples of Christ, right? That's why you're here. When Jesus was alive, there were a lot of people who wanted to follow him, literally. And some people, like the guy with the demons we talked about last Sunday, he told him to go home. Tell everybody in his family and his friends, and he did not tell him to follow him. Other people, he kind of scolded a little bit. Said, because they were saying, we want to follow you, but we'll have to do something else first. And he said, either come or don't come. And then there were the ones that wanted to follow him, and he wanted them to know just what they were going to face. Let me ask you this. If I were to give you this dollar, you could do anything you wanted with it, right? You could buy candy. You could maybe buy a toy. Or you could put it in the offering plate for the church. Jesus told people that they had a choice. If they wanted to follow him, it wasn't always easy. He himself didn't have any place to live. He said, I have nowhere to lay my head. Foxes have holes, birds have nests, I don't have a place to lay my head. That was what they would have to endure to follow him. So they had a choice. They could go and live their lives with a toy or candy, or they could give it to the give their life to Christ. And we all have to make that choice. And it isn't always easy to do. But it's a good thing. Thank you. Now I invite you to bow with me for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you call us to ventures that cannot be foretold, to paths we do not know. Be our guide through your word and feed us with your assurance that your way is truly the path of love, joy, and peace. This we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. scripture reading for today comes from Psalm 77, 1 through 2 and 11 through 20, the New International Version. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your waves through the mighty waters. Through, though your footprints were not seen, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron.
Today's sermon scripture reading is from Luke 9, 51 through 62, from the New International Version. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was headed for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's continue now with our Sunday message. When Sarah graduated from college, she landed her dream job with a company that paid her a high starting salary. She could buy almost anything she wanted. She could travel and live in comfort. She thought she had it made. Then she started to learn about her employer's history of mistreating employees, mishandling money, and engaging in deceptive business practices. Soon her dream job was no longer such a dream. Sarah became concerned. She wondered whether she should leave this company. Yet it was hard for her to turn her back on all of that money. How could she possibly leave all of that behind? In a reading today from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus reminds us of the expectations that are placed on our lives as we follow Christ. Jesus models living a simple life, not focused on the trappings of success. And Jesus calls us to live a life of sacrifice, loving and serving others including those whom the world often rejects. In the time of Jesus, many groups were often rejected, including the Samaritans. But Jesus did not hesitate to care for the poor, the forgotten, the outcast. And Jesus resisted injustice and oppression. So what do you think Jesus might have said to Sarah as she struggled through her concerns about her employment? For a while, Sarah did continue to enjoy this job that paid her so well. Yet at times she had this nagging feeling inside of her that it was time for her to make a change. Then came the global pandemic in 2020. As she learned of millions of people getting sick and quickly passing away, she reflected on her own life. And she realized how she often put her own comfort over the well being of others. Finally, Sarah decided that it was time for her to change her values. And eventually, Sarah would participate in what's been called the Great Resignation. Millions of Americans quit their jobs in this pandemic, searching for new employment that would bring them greater fulfillment. Many of them realized that now is the time to start spending more time making a difference in the lives of others. They came to see how important it is to love and care for others, to love our neighbor, just as Jesus has taught us. Jesus cares for the outcasts, like the Samaritans. And in our reading today, the disciples are traveling with Jesus in a mission to the Samaritans. Yet their trip does not go as expected, and Jesus is rejected by the Samaritans. Then James and John want to respond by burning up the Samaritan's village. Just as Elijah called down fire from heaven 
to destroy the prophets of Baal. That's when Jesus rebukes them. And Jesus reminds them that life will not always go as planned. When we encounter roadblocks and struggle and rejection, there's no need to retaliate. And Jesus will help us to keep going. Then the text says that Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. To set one's face means to move with a firm purpose and intention. So Jesus is completely devoted to his assignment to go to Jerusalem and complete the most important task of his earthly ministry. Jesus starts to warn the disciples that soon he will be betrayed and put to death. And Jesus tells us all that following Jesus requires a deep and unrelenting commitment. It requires learning how to respond to rejection and persecution, persecution that may come as we live in a countercultural way, as we reject the values of a world that focuses on money and status and our own self-interests. We must walk the way of Jesus, no matter what sacrifice may be involved. Today, Jesus invites every one of us to examine our own priorities as we keep following Jesus. And like Sarah, we might decide that it's time for a change. It's time for us to shift our priorities so that we can devote more of our time to sacrificial service. We'll devote more of our lives in loving service to God and to our neighbors all around us. My friends, what might you need to change so that you may share more of your life, loving God and neighbor? Please pray with me. Oh God, there is so much in our world that draws our attention away from you. So God, help us to turn back to you. Give us the strength and the will to serve others and to sacrifice as we faithfully follow your son, Jesus. In all this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
let's continue now in prayer. If you have a prayer need today, you are welcome to send us a prayer request at this email address, office at auburnfirstgmc.org. Auburn First GMC is all one word and first is spelled out. We are always honored to pray with you. At this time, I'd like to offer a pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray for the strength and the will to serve and to sacrifice as we faithfully follow you wherever you may lead us. We pray that you will shape us into a people who will bring people together in your name. Help us to see in your diverse people the majesty of your desire for the richness of difference. We pray for hearts that will not judge, for minds that recognize injustice and oppression in all of its forms, and for hands that are open to answer your call. Oh God, we pray for those who are in pain, for those awaiting surgery, and for those with a new diagnosis. May you heal them in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for all who suffer. Lift the yoke of human pain from the sick, the hungry, and the grieving. May we all experience your healing peace. And now we take a moment in the silence to bring you other concerns that we hold in our hearts today. Oh God, we now lead these prayers with you, trusting in your mighty power and your grace. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us all how to pray when he said these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem to offer himself for the sake of the world, let us now offer our tithes and gifts and thanksgiving. We invite you to give electronically or mail your gift to the church. You may give online on our church website, auburnfirstumc.org. Or if you're mailing your gift, our church address is listed at the top of the church website. Let us pray. Gracious God, you give us your creation for our home and fill it with the necessities of life. You give us yourself as Jesus, our teacher, friend, and savior, whose life, death, resurrection, and ascension show us daily your love for your people. You give us your Holy Spirit who fills our heart with prayers and by whose light we hear your word. Bless these gifts and make us truly thankful all glory and honor are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, disciples of Jesus, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. May you have a grace-filled week, and we look forward to seeing you right back here next Sunday.